There was a time long ago, the distant memory for the few of us who have survived those, those ages, uh, when a group of warriors defended the community from the dark side of Counter-Strike. These days, that era is looked back upon as mere stories and legends to delight and fascinate the noobs, the plebs of our community. Uh, and, and long ago, the dark side ended up winning out. The warriors of light were vanquished into exile. And without their stalwart heroes, such as Method, K-Sharp, Rambo, Storm, Shagwar, to defend them, the, uh, the North American Counter-Strike scene has endured a period of struggle and strife that has been unmatched in Counter-Strike's history. The European overlords won. They have had an unending rate of dominance ever since then. This is the story of the great North American purge. Okay, so obviously, beyond all the silliness, um, this is the video that I recorded before Barcelona. I actually recorded it twice, and both times I failed to properly um, list my correct microphone. So it didn't. It never got posted before Barcelona because it got recorded with no audio twice. So I'm I'm pretty solid so far. Uh, third time's the charm. Also, as you can see, I'm, I'm at MLG currently for uh, the major qualifier, so I'm doing this from the hotel room, so there's a little bit of inconsistencies. For instance, I hope you're all sufficiently triggered by the fact that the font of the topic title is completely different from the font of all the other text. So have fun with that. If you have OCD, I am kind of sorry. Not, not, not too big of a deal. Uh, but I wanted to talk about... Um, you know, with all this talk about how, how North America has struggled and how obviously our region is so far below the European, I want to talk about one big reason that doesn't often get mentioned why North America has descended into this kind of a period. How, why, what has caused them to, um, you know, what has caused us over the past years, you know, going on, you know, five, six years, we haven't ever been able to compete in Counter-Strike with the Europeans on a consistent basis. Uh, and this is just kind of one theory I have as to why that came about. Because at one point in Counter-Strike history, North America was able to compete. We, we, we were never, like, dominant. We weren't just, you know, racking up championships and, and bringing home trophies every event. Uh, but we had teams like Complexity, like 3D way back when, uh, you know, GamerCo, which is like an old rival, a West Coast-based team. Um, we, we've had some teams, um, and these are all primarily 1.6, which is where my background is. So I'm sure there's, there's plenty of source teams that may have been able to as well. But um, now it's just like... I mean, it's obvious we, we don't have these we don't have these teams that are consistently able to go overseas and, and compete internationally and get these top fours. Uh, whereas we used to at least have teams that, that you could hope would would be in the top four and from there anything could happen. So I wanted to look back and talk about why that happened because I think there's a lot of lessons you can learn by by looking into the past and and seeing you know what you can take from from those those kind of situations. Um, so in my opinion, one of the biggest culprits um, to why the North American region has has fallen so far um, was a league called CGS, uh, the Championship Gaming Series. Um, this was formed in 2007 with, I mean, plenty of you know the story. Uh, for those of you who don't, it was a league that was formed in 2007, uh, partnered with DirecTV to broadcast uh, esports to the mainstream audience through pay-per-view television. Uh, franchises were established, esports franchises. They competed across five different competitions. Uh, just really quick, Project Gotham Racing was one of them. Dead or Alive had a male and female competition. Uh, FIFA was in it. Um, and the big thing was, was Counter-Strike, and they used Counter-Strike Source, which is very, very important. So, I mean, that's that's something we got to know, and I'll talk about. I'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, but either way, as I saw on Skype, sorry about that. Um, the league was a failure for many reasons, but most relevant is the fact that they used Source, because our community at the time was split. There was kind of a Source scene, there was a 1.6 scene, both of them had their top teams, you know, their, their up-and-coming players. They were all pretty much independently independent scenes, outside of the fact that they were all from the Counter-Strike franchise. Um, so when CGS came around and formed this league and they said it's going to be Source, all of our 1.6 teams and players that had been competing from, you know, 2002 to 2003, all the way up to 2007, had been playing and competing for five, six years, uh, some of them even seven or eight. All of them switched to Source to play in this league because this league was offering things that no one had really heard of quite yet. You know, they were offering salaries to the players that would be in it. It was, you know, it was just a great opportunity to be on mainstream television. Um, so... All of these, all of these different things and factors came into play, and it, and it pretty much, when all the 1.6 players migrated over to Source to play in this league, there's a couple things that happened that that kind of spell spell the downfall in the future for when CGS failed. Like one of which is, you know, this this whole tournament league uh, ecosystem that had been built up over the course of almost a decade. 
um, for 1.6 pretty much collapsed because all the top players, all the top teams stopped attending these events. Um, CGS, you know, the, the players at the time in the in the franchises basically sold their souls to CGS. So CGS could tell them, you know, they could, the players would come, and I have this from from some of the players that were involved. Players would be like, hey, there's this 1.6 tournament this weekend that's like $10,000. We want to go to it, and CGS would be like, no, we don't want you playing at 1.6 because it's not the game that we're running in our in our in our league that you're signed up for. We only want you competing in, in Source uh, in Counter Strike Source. So no 1.6. Um, you know, a source event would come around that's not run by CGS, and they could say no to that. They could say, no, we don't want you coming. And they didn't do it all the time, but they did it often enough to make it an issue. So all these different leagues started having no, none of the top teams, so none of the attention, you know, so they, so they couldn't make money, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't sell sponsorships, anything like that. Um, so all the leagues started dying off. All the tournament structures started dying off. All the independent, you know, local tournaments, the land scenes just kind of fell apart because all of a sudden we had this player base that no longer could attend them. Um, so... What happened is when CGS failed, all these 1.6 players that had moved over to Source to play in CGS, all of a sudden they find themselves able to play 1.6 again, but there's nothing there. You know, there's no money in it because all the sponsors back like died out because there was, you know, no tournaments, uh, no 1.6 franchises. So they come back after CGS dies and there's absolutely nothing. It's a barren wasteland. So we have all these Counter-Strike players that have been playing for almost a decade, have been playing for eight years, all this knowledge, all this experience, all this, all this know-how in terms of building a team, in terms of developing talent. Uh, in terms of creating strategies and how to play the game property, all this experience against international competition, instead of coming back to 1.6, they just, I mean, they had nothing to return to, so they just left. They just quit. All these players just retired. It'd be like, if you look at the scene we have today, like, what would, I mean, you want to talk about how bad North America is right now or how much it struggles? Imagine, you know, the top six, seven teams in our in our league, in our profession, in pro league in North America right now, just quit tomorrow. Like, all of a sudden, we definitely have no one who can compete with Europeans, but we have all these players that move up from the from the Premier Division who who don't have that experience. Um, so it was this massive evacuation, massive retirement, just like an extinction of of all professional Counter Strike in North America. Um, on top of that, the other thing that happened is when these players moved over to Source originally to play in CGS, they had been at the top of their game for years. So there was an entire league, an entire division underneath them. It would be like the the equivalent of ESCA Premier. So it was like these, all these premier players that had been working on getting to the professional level, into the invite division uh, for two, three years, four years, some of them, and had never been able to do it for whatever reason, whether it was talent, whether it was not being able to put a team together, not knowing how to work as a team, not knowing how to develop strategies, you know, all these issues, personal issues were, were all through these lower, these lower leagues. So all of a sudden, once the once the top tier moves over to CGS, these are the guys who hadn't been able to earn their way into the invite division for like two, three years. They automatically get moved up, and they're automatically the cream of the crop. And they never get replaced, because no one ever comes back. So these guys are all of a sudden the standard for North American Counter-Strike. These, these players who have some skill, who grew up in a pug environment, who grew up uh, not learning how to play Team Counter-Strike, were never actually able to make it and break it into the professional uh, divisions. Uh, these guys were all of a sudden, you know, what what everyone in the North American team strive for. It was like this bar just gets dropped 10 pegs and everyone's like, all right, this is the new bar for being a professional or for being the best player in North America is you can get by with these tendencies. So the quality of Counter-Strike just flat out dropped because CGS left this massive vacuum in our Counter-Strike scene. So, you know, when you don't when you don't have that high level to, to strive for, um, when you don't have... You know the the top players are are just kind of like, for lack of a better word, they're they're just shit. Um, all of a sudden, the bar is so low that everyone just kind of the the collectively you don't have to be as good anymore, and that's kind of what replaced uh what place replaced professional Counter Strike in North America at the time. Um, and and then one of the big things is our leaders were just gone. Um, this is and this is a, this is a crucial point to this entire argument is we had no one to pass knowledge on down to these guys because the, the general progression of the scene is you know you have all this young talent that gets discovered that rises the ranks you know you look at someone like kusta right now who like it's you know he's been he's been killing it in lower leagues gets brought up you know shroud was the same way killing it gets brought into cloud nine plays under sean learn some things from him uh stewie 2k that's the entire argument of why he can be successful over in europe you see the same thing these young players get de get developed and they come up but I'm going to give you two big examples that are going to help out as to why this is such an issue. Uh, the first one is if you look over at Sweden, um, a guy like Karn, who 
was a part of a lot of successful teams in 1.6, a historical legend player uh, in his own right. Um, you know, his tenure in Counter-Strike, he was able to play with some of the greatest players we have in the scene right now. Uh, you know, he, he was able to develop and, and learn with these players and teach them things and pass things on. I mean, you look at some of the guys he's played with, Exist, Get Right, Forest, all in NIP. Uh, PETA, who's now coaching CLG, Threat, he played with Threat, who now coaches NIP. Probably, I mean, there's there's many more. With Karin, there's like an unending number of examples you can use for him, but... He's able to work with younger players, all these different guys, and bring them up in his structure, teach them how to not only be good players, but good teammates, uh, how to work in a team environment, how to be professional, um, the things you have to do outside of actually playing the game in order to be successful. He's able to pass all this knowledge down. And then these guys are able to, you know, maybe in the future they go to a new team or they have a, they have a different teammate and they use some of these lessons that Karn taught them and they pass that on to the new players. And then those guys can pass that on. And all of a sudden you have these lessons from Karn, you know, that, that he's able to impart to his teammates that permeate throughout the entire community. And all this success that they've had, I'm not going to base it all on Karn, but he that's a, that's a big help having that leader. Um, who can teach and pass things on. We got none of that in North America. Uh, another big example is look at Fallen. He was also a successful 1.6 player. And you can just see what he's been able to do. Brings in Brazilian teammates um, that we'd never really heard of. They have some success initially. He keeps developing, keeps teaching. Uh, and all of a sudden, they're world beaters. You know, it takes them about a year to get up to this level, and they're, and they're starting to contend with the world. Not only that, but then Bolts, who is a former teammate of his in, in Luminosity, is now on Tempo Storm, and they're living with the Luminosity guys. They're living with Fallen uh, here in the state. So all of a sudden, all these lessons are now passed on to a second Brazilian team, and now this second Brazilian team is able to dominate North America. Um, not dominate, but I mean they're they're having amazing showings lately, taking taking spots in our qualifiers. Um, you know, teaching them how to be good individuals, how to be how to work as a team, how to practice, how to work hard. All these different lessons, all this discipline in terms of you know the the amount of work you have to put into being a professional Counter Strike player. You know, you you can see having that kind of a leadership person, whether it be Karn, whether it be be Fallen. Um, has helped these scenes and helped these different teams and players that come from these scenes. Uh, it's incredible. And after CGS died, we lost all of that because everyone, 3D players, all gone. Uh, the complexity guys, they stuck around. They went on to EG, obviously. Uh, and, and some of the source guys stuck around. But, you know, all the West Coast guys that have been playing 1.6 for like a decade, they're gone. All these different 1.6 players who had, been, who had had some top placings at international events at CPLs, just eliminated so they have no one there's there was no one to pass on to this new guard of north american counter-strike players um and a lot of the issues that you can see in lower divisions are, are the issues that go on in our professional scene you think some of the big issues that prevents players from really ascending to professionalism in counter-strike uh you know not being able to overcome personal issues having personality problems not being able to work in a team um you know not being willing to put in the hard work um or just not knowing, flat out not knowing how in some cases right now in North America is just, you know, they've, they've never had anyone who's done it before teach them. Uh, and we've had very few of those people over the past years. Now, this all went down in like 2002, 2007, 2008. So, it, I mean, there's no logical reason why we should not have recovered from it. Um, it's taken a massively long time for to get us back up to this level. And we still have a long way to go. But I mean, what we're seeing right now is this is like a shift in mindset. I think all the North American players are starting to kind of get this idea that um, they need to have a culture change, you know, in how they approach the game. And I think we're starting to see that. And that's that's sometimes the hardest thing to go through is this entire not only shift like one team might might agree that they need it, but nothing changes unless the whole community starts coming around. So it is it's this slow process. Uh, but this is why leadership is so and so incredibly important. Uh, it takes a long time to develop, it takes a long time for a player to make himself known as a leader well enough to get the respect of, of, his, of his teammates, much less respect amongst the community and everything. Um, and, and as we move forward, the easiest way we're going to be able to do this is, is we're going to start finding younger players that we need to move up, younger, talented players that ha that are hungry, that see you know the current guard uh, and say this isn't good enough, and they're willing to work harder. And then as these younger players, you know, improve and they and they start taking the places among our professional players um all of a sudden the entire culture the entire bar gets raised in our scene one more time um so so this recovery that we're going through right now is just going to take some time but i mean looking back that this is the thing we need to be able to develop the uh the lower stages of talent here in north america we need to be able to 
you know, develop players who are willing to work hard, who can develop teammates, who can who can bring the entire collective Counter Strike scene in North America up a notch, uh, and that's kind of what we're going through. So, um, yeah, looking back, we we cannot afford to have another CGS that just crippled our entire scene for so long, uh, removed so many opportunities, uh, you know, in terms of organizations, in terms of tournaments, uh, in terms of of just player base, uh, you know, the younger players improving. Um, so we're gonna we need we need more leadership coming into the scene. We needed to stick around. We needed to pass on knowledge.